Hi, I'm Nick Sharapa from National Catholic Reporter. I'm here in this room where there are over 500 relics. Now, where would you expect 500 relics to be? Perhaps Rome, perhaps someplace in Spain. But no, these relics are in Clyde, Missouri. How did they get here? I sat down with Sister Ruth to find out a little bit more. Well, if we could, I'd like to start at the beginning. What is a relic? In the Catholic tradition, a relic is a sacred object of a saint, and there are different degrees of relics. A first degree relic is an actual body part of a saint. A second degree relic would be something that the saint owned. It might be a piece of clothing that they wore. And a third degree relic is something that was touched to the body of the saint. And in our, here in our chapel, we have mostly first degree relics and um, some second degree relics. Relics in the Catholic tradition were more popular, certainly in the Middle Ages. They were, became places of pilgrimage. So if you had a holy person die in your town, you would try and keep their body or at least get a piece of their body, something to, to put on display in a church there. And then pilgrims from all over Europe would come and um, ask for prayer, ask for help from this particular pilgrim. Great. So what role does a relic play in Christian life? Relics certainly serve the purpose of reminding us that we do have saints in our church and that they are here really to intercede for us here on earth. So this relic is actually kind of a nice place to come and make a little pilgrimage to a saint that you might be very fond of and just ask for intercession on your behalf. Now tell me, how do... 500 relics get to Clyde, Missouri? That's a great question, because we're here in the middle of nowhere, and we have over 550 relics here in our chapel. The story really begins after World War I with the devastation in Europe. Our community published a magazine called Tabernacle and Purgatory at that time. And we would get letters from these convents, these seminaries, these churches in Europe, talking about how we are starving to death. Is there anything you can do to help us? So through this magazine, we solicited our readership to send in donations, and we would print some of these letters for them to read. And over time, by 1927, we probably collected close to $2 million to send over to Europe. And then in gratitude for that help, a lot of these communities would send us relics that they had or bishops would send us some relics from their diocese. We'd love to have some relics of uh, Mother Teresa or John Paul II or Pope John XXIII, but have not yet acquired any of those. It's harder, I think, to get relics in today's world. We probably couldn't get a first degree relic, but we'd like to have a second degree relic, maybe something that Pope wore or, or Mother Teresa wore. That'd be a great addition to our chapel. What are some of your more notable relics that you have here? Some of our more notable ones are St. Beatrice, who is a, a full skeleton from the catacombs. And she was thought to have been a martyr in some of the early centuries of the church. And her body was removed in 1822 from the catacombs. And the inscription where she was buried in her niche had an M by it, which meant a martyr. And then they also found a, a vial of dried blood with her skeletal remains, which they used to keep that was also an indication that she was probably a martyr. We have Therese of Lisieux, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross. We also have Mother Cabrini, Elizabeth Ann Seton, who are American canonized saints, mm -hmm. several popes. We also have a true relic of the cross. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some relics of the 12 apostles. If I wanted to, could I buy a relic? Or, or what's the church's teaching on buying and selling relics? You cannot buy and sell relics even if it was my favorite saint. You could offer us a million dollars and we would not take it. <laughs> no, okay. Sometimes we'll have Protestants come in and tour our chapel, and of course they're really not aware of relics, and it's a kind of a bizarre idea to them. But one example that I like to kind of compare it to is, you know, after the tragedy of 9-11, um, they combed through all the rubble of the World Trade Center um, to try and find any body fragment of somebody's loved one. Um, and those families, it seemed, you know, they just wanted even a little piece of their loved one. Um, 
so that's kind of, you know, a relic is something, something tangible that we can see or that we can hold. And it basically reminds us of a very special person in our life. Today, it would be photographs mostly in the modern world. In medieval times, it was actually going to see um, the relic of a saint. Reporting for National Catholic Reporter, this is Nick Sharapa. Thank you.